Well, I got me a cup of coffee. We're gonna head out today. I got the rollback running. Um, I kind of bought a truck on accident, kind of. Not really. I don't know. Um, I looked at this truck weeks ago before I bought my Dodge. And I had seen it up for sale. And uh, it had a just a ridiculous price on it. You know, they just wanted way too much for it. And I... Uh, I thought it was way too high, but I liked the truck. It, it suited my needs for what I was looking for, and I thought, well, shoot, well, I'll just keep an eye on it. Well, then it disappeared, and when it disappeared, I just like, oh, okay, well, never mind. And then later, when it reappeared, it had a more realistic price tag on it, and uh, so I thought, all right, well, I'll go take a look at it. So I went to go take a look at it, and the reason it had a more realistic price tag on it is because it had engine problems. And uh, I don't know if it had engine problems while they were trying to sell it, or if it was just the price was too high, one or the other. But uh, I just said, well, okay, well, I'll make you an offer, but it needs engine work, and you know, the, these things, any diesel's not easy and cheap to work on. They're, they get up in the money pretty, pretty quick. And uh, they were like, yeah, we're not going to take that. Well, it's going to take more to buy it than that. So I said, all right, well, not a big deal. If you change your mind, you know, just uh, give me a call. I said, but I'm on the hunt for another truck. So I'm looking to buy a truck. I'm not messing around. I'm, I'm hoping to buy one quick like. I said, yeah, well, it won't be this one. I'm like, okay, no need to get aggravated. I mean... I can't help but you owe too much in your truck for what its value is, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. So, um, you know, time goes on, and I watch it, and, you know, their number's still up there, still too high, and uh, I went ahead and was, did exactly what I said. I, I continued to look for, look for a work truck, and that's when I came across the Dodge, I bought it. So I've had that Dodge now for, oh, a couple of weeks anyways, probably three weeks now, and, uh, you know, now they decide that, you know, they haven't got any better offers, so I guess now they they wanted to sell it. So they called me yesterday and said, all right, we'll take your offer. And I told them, I said, well, I already, like I told you, I, I was looking for a truck. I bought one. And uh, I said, but, you know, if everything's still the same with the truck, I'll come out. If it's all the same, I said, I'll stand, I'll stand good for my offer because I believe, uh, I believe that'd be a fair price that I could fix the truck and either keep it or, you know, sell it. It doesn't matter. I, we could do it either, you know. Um, and he's like, well, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. I said, hang on here. Pretty much is not like it's the same. And he's like, no, no, it's the same. I'm like, okay. So I'm going out because when you have a truck with engine problems and you're trying to sell it, and you're not a guy who works on diesels. You can do a lot of damage fast if you're not paying attention to what you're doing here. If you're not aware of what, what can happen. So we're going to go out and take a look at it. We're going to make sure that it's in the same condition. And uh, if it is, then I'm going to honor my offer and I'm going to buy the truck. So we're going to head out there and take us, I don't know, probably about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes in this truck to get there. So we'll see what it turns into. check all my straps again make sure everything's still tight I know this is a lot of overkill but there's a reason I have chains and straps um, I have the straps actually holding the truck down and the chains are loading the suspension so that the truck isn't bouncing because if the truck body 
can't move on the suspension, then I have better control with the rollback and it's not gonna be apt to be pushed around as much, especially in turns and what have you. But yeah, I think we're good. So let's head on back. I got a, I think I smell a brake getting a little warm over here. I don't know why having trouble with calipers on this thing. You can see it's getting warm. It's starting to let the gear oil come out. So I'm gonna get something and check that out real quick. It looks like I'm gonna be putting the caliper on this. This is why I don't ever do brakes without calipers and hoses. And a lot of guys think it's overkill and I spend too much money on stuff I don't necessarily need to. But you know, when I do that kind of stuff, I don't have these problems. And this was nothing more than, well, they're okay right now. So, but now I, I, this side has already been replaced now with the hose. So now I'm gonna do that side and the hose has already been replaced. So I'll do that caliper and meanwhile we're heating up my my brake pads and my rotor so now they're not going to stop as well so it's that's why I do things like I do you know yeah. and I shouldn't sway from that because when I do it always comes back to bite me in the end I mean we're okay to get home I hit it with a spud bar or a pry bar or whatever you want to call it and uh, it seemed to do okay it, it seemed like it, it's it's not pulling that way again but it may, it may, uh, if I hit the brakes, it might, you know, seize up or lock up again. But I'm just going to go easy and uh, slow down plenty early so I can avoid heating up that rotor any more than I have to. It's not a big deal. Just take our time. Hitting that with that uh, bar I had must have done the trick because it's not pulling and I don't smell brakes anymore. I've been real easy and gentle all the way home. But, you know, I was talking about the uh, tying down the body of the suspension uh, on this truck because you know if you tie it down then it doesn't move and I don't know if that's going to show up in the camera or not but you can see the kind of rough roads we're on that body's not moving so when that body stays tight or loaded to my truck it's not doing this so that gives that gives the the weight of the of the truck on the rollback keeps it planted on mine which means that my truck isn't doing this so in wet weather bad weather you know snow ice whatever um, or a panic situation we have more control of our truck because that's not moving back there now that we're home I'll go ahead and release some of that tension before I back it in here just let it come up just till I got slack in it. All right, good. Okay. The body on this truck's really nice. So is the frame, which is one of the reasons that I bought it. Um, it's in a it's a 2012 F350 with a a 67 power stroke. So the engine troubles are likely to be a spun bearing. Um, they can't get it to crank over. It's got very very clean oil in it which tells me they either ran it out of oil or spun a bearing and uh, you know tried to change the oil thinking that would let it start but it didn't obviously uh, I haven't tried to crank it over by hand but I bought it uh, accordingly you know that it's gonna need a at the very least engine repair but more than likely it'll need an engine replacement which whatever it is what it is not our first rodeo with these six, seven power strokes, that's for sure. But when I get it all, I'll show you, it's it's a pretty clean truck. It's got some add-ons, you know, some things, but uh, it had much bigger, wider tires on it, which is why I had the fender flares. But um, I got I got some ideas. We might just move some stuff around. And I, I do have another engine sitting around that we could probably put in this if need be. Or I might just sell it broken, let somebody else fix it, let it let it be their project. I don't know. We'll get it unloading, get up to the shop, and I'll get a bar on it and see if we can turn it over. But I, I'm going to put money on it's locked up. Just because it's a 11 to 13, and that's a pretty common issue with them. All right, so we got off the, the rollback now. And, you know, the first thing that you probably notice is big, goofy fender, fender flares here. Well, they had wider tires on this thing, and they had a different offset. So this, these were to protect the body. And apparently it did a fairly good job because the bottoms aren't beat up from stones and rocks and everything. 
but now so let's talk about what's attractive about this truck um, this is a 2012 67 power stroke it's a lariat truck with all the bells and whistles and I don't usually go for all the bells and whistles but I do like having leather interior and I do like having cruise control power windows power locks that's about all I need but when you can get something that's a little bit more it just helps with the value so the things that suck about this truck is one they were pulling a camper and smashed the corner of the bed up and boogered up the tailgate but whatever not the end of the world but this is Northeast Ohio and the inside of this bed is in nice shape there's no rusty lip here I was gonna take these off and look behind it um, but I'm not gonna do that quite yet it feels good and solid the the floor has a couple spots where they've dropped something and it's damaged the floor but and held water where it dropped but it's not a big deal so this truck was being used to haul a camper is what it was and uh, you know it's a 2012 f-350 and Ford obviously many people know they had a problem from 11 when they first came out with the 6.7 up until 2013 they had problems with turbos going bad and sending shrapnel through the through the engine destroying it and they had problems with main bearings spinning because they block they say the block flexes under a load and allows the main bearing to spin inside of the journal of the actual block itself a lot of guys in the last video where I talked about one of these and I took it apart said that, you know, those tabs that are on there are not locking tabs. And I just told them all the same thing. Look, when they used to use them, they didn't have problems with, with bearings spinning in the international diesels. They had all kinds of other problems, but the bearings weren't spinning. Now they don't have it in the Ford motors, which the 6.7 is the first all Ford engineered uh, and built engine they built themselves and now they have problems with locking tabs and uh, they have problems with main bearings spinning I should say but uh, so I went into this knowing that there's a very very high chance high probability that it's going to need a motor based on the fact of what it is and uh, its history and just the vehicle itself and when I looked at the oil the oil is brand new and fresh right but the oil filter that's on it is old so it leads me to believe that um, they tried to drain the oil, put new oil in it and see if it would start, or they drained the oil to see what uh, condition the oil was. But if you drain the oil and you saw metal in the oil, I don't know why you'd put new oil back in. It's, it's not going to be any good, but regardless, it's locked up. Um, and there's several th reasons an engine can lock up. One could be, again, a main bearing. That could definitely be our problem. That's, that's the most likely problem with this, knowing what was going on when it happened. Towing a camper under a load, these things are known for the block to flex and let that happen. Another thing could be coolant. It could have gotten coolant into a cylinder and locked up that cylinder and hydrolocked it. It's very possible. I guess it could have got oil in the cylinder and locked up as well. You could have an accessory drive something on here locked up that won't let it turn over. Um, you could have a failure in the torque converter. Well, the accessory drive isn't nearly as common as it used to be with today's new high-powered gear reduction starters. But anyways, you could have a problem in the transmission, torque converter, whatever that's locked up and won't let it turn. Um, the, the best thing I could do would be to just go ahead and take this apart get the glow plugs out of it and see if it'll crank over then if it cranks over and coolant or oil spits out well that motor might be salvageable um, or I could do the other way I could take the old oil filter that's on it take it off the truck put it on the bench cut it apart let's see what's in it because that's gonna tell us the real story and the real story I think is we got a spun main bearing but anyways I'm gonna get it off it this this truck has been uh, down the road of aftermarket bliss for sure it's got a mishimoto air charge cooler here it's actually it's not it's a it's a liquid cooled air charge cooler there's no stranger to the ford dealer they've got the new air charge cooler pipe here uh this one they've got hose clamped on there's another uh motorcraft heater hose over here there's another one way down inside the engine and the emissions have uh, gone on a diet on this thing so it's a little bit lighter in that area and then it's got an aftermarket air cleaner assembly here which i'm never a fan of i just prefer the stock stuff and it's got uh coil spring lift here to make the tires fit 
They've cut away a little bit of that cross member to make the crossover steering work. They put in polyurethane bushings for the sway bar. And there's just all kinds of stuff. There's the airbags that are added here for the camper. And then there's a onboard air compressor and tank down in here. Look at the backside of that cab. Such nice shape for this truck. And that was that was definitely one one of the most attractive things of this. You know, the cab corners are beautiful, the rockers are beautiful, the inner rockers are good. They had one heck of a lift on it. Look at them trailing arms they put on. <laughs> but anyways, let's get that oil filter off. We'll get a look at it. You're busy cleaning it. Giving it a good wipe down. I'll go to the other side. My wife's gonna give it a look. I originally bought this truck for my wife to drive because it was short. It's extended cab short bed and she didn't want an all out big long truck, but I don't know. I definitely like this one a lot better than the other one. Mostly because I gave it when my brother bought that that was a rust free truck and it ain't now and I'm unhappy about how much rust is on it. And this one's clean. So she's giving it a wipe down because these people had crumb crunchers and it was full of crumbs, wasn't it lady? So she's giving it a vacuum and a, a good cleaning. And then she's doing her assessment of what the interior needs, which she's already told me in order for her to clean it the way she wants, I need to pull the seats out. So I'll pull the seats out of this, uh, all the sill plates, and then she can scrub them all down. She can vacuum everything up, and she wants to wash the carpet, scrub it, whatever. Bottoms of the doors look good. It's got all the doodads and the goodies. Upfitter switches, got the Microsoft Sync touch screen. I don't know if that's a touch screen. I don't remember if these are touch screen. I don't know. I, I care less about doodads and goodies, but whatever. Yeah. I do like the chrome trim around the vents. Those are one of my favorite up one of my favorite upgrades on these. It just looks so much better. Um, like I said, they had their big wide wheels on it and they put these back on it, these are factory twenties, which whatever they are, what they are, aftermarket, fog lights, the LED light across there got broke when they had it towed, and uh, it stuck out too far, I guess, something happened, but it's got heated mirrors with turns, heated power mirrors, built-in turn signals, and they're, they're the extendables, they, they go in and out, there it is, just have to turn the key on. But it's got what I call the booster seat, which will be nice for her because she can take this thing up nice and high and then she can move the pedals up as far as she wants to. Tilt wheel, you know, it's got the power moon roof and it's got a rear defrost on the back power window, the slider. And I really like that. I like a Lariat for the, for the options. Heated and cooled seats, she'll love the heated part. Um, yeah, I don't know if it has a locking differential. I think you, yep, yeah, there it is. Pull it out and it's locking diff. Yeah. So she's gonna get all cleaned up, but next thing I'm gonna do is take the oil filter off and let's cut it apart and see what it looks like on the inside and see if we got a filter full of oil or full of metal like I expect. Very suspect when you see such clean oil because any diesel that's been started that oil wouldn't be clean so I believe they drain the oil or maybe put some in it I don't know but I suspect we got oil this year engine issues it's still red and looks good so the transmission might be okay We'll know soon enough. Let's get that oil filter off. Oh. Oh yeah, it cooked it. It cooked it. Look at that. See the goop come out of here. The 
little sludge. She's done. <laughs> I don't suppose we need to go any farther. I don't guess we need to go any farther. She needs a motor. There ain't no coming back from that. Good lord. How hot did you actually get that oil before it finally locked up? Wow. I wish you could smell this. That is just awful. It tells me that nothing got oil. So that turbo was probably junk. The cam will be junk. This whole entire thing will be scrap metal. Looks like we need to just go ahead and get ready to pull the engine. Which means we'll have to pull the transmission and torque converter at the same time. Because we're not going to be able to turn it over, I bet. <laughs> oh, boy. It's pretty rough. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but it is full of metal. Just crap all through it. Um, and that's just the oil being just broke down and overheated and turned into sludge. So there's absolutely no coming back from that. That that engine is done. I mean, we might be able to sack, uh, salvage a few pieces off of it, but there's not going to be a lot. And I wouldn't I wouldn't rebuild that engine. So we don't know what happened. Did it overheat and then um, cook the oil until it couldn't pump it anymore, and then spun a bearing, or did it spin a bearing? got so hot from the spun bearing and the heat and the resistance of that main bearing uh, trying to spin and you know it just getting so overheated which that's would be the way I would think because there's no codes for over temperature in this in this truck for it being uh, high temps so we don't know exactly what happened but we know enough to know that we don't want that engine at all we're not going to use it so uh, the next step for us would be to decide whether we want to keep this truck for us or do we sell it the way it is and now we can tell someone hey it needs a, a complete engine you know the the transmission fluid is still bright red smells good mm, if it was me I'd replace motor and transmission both and I'll tell you why I'd be taking the cab off to replace it anyways it'll never be easier to replace that transmission than right then and if I bought it at low mileage used one motor and transmission both Hmm, that's a nice combination to put in and feel kind of secure about it pretty confident um, This truck in my area is worth somewhere between 20 and 26,000 so You know that's in running condition not the way it is the way it is. I don't know maybe 15,000 is what it's worth um, Shouldn't be really a, a hard sell to because it is Rust free the doors the cab corners the rockers everything is is in really good shape the interior has a little bit of wear on this seat You know, it's not cleaned up like all detailed like my wife does but you know this seat's got some wear But it's not horrible But everything in the armrest here has wear but everything else is really in nice shape headliners good all of the electrical accessories seem to work um, so in that respect, the truck has a lot to offer and it's a high dollar truck. It's not, a, this is not a cheap truck by any stretch. I think I have another panel. There was something stuck on that with like a glue. She couldn't get that off. I think I have another one of them, but anyways, in my area. So if it's worth between 20 and 26,000 running and driving, then it's gotta be worth 15,000 as it is not running and driving she likes it's got her power rear slider it's got a defroster 
on the rear slider, you know. There's a lot of benefits here for her. She really didn't want a crew cab long bed because they're just too long. She wanted something like that short, that one. But that one I'm pretty upset about because it's got rust underneath it and it didn't when we sold it to my brother. And this one, the frame is just absolutely beautiful on it. And uh, I don't know. We just have to decide what to do. I have another truck that has a good motor and transmission. Um, but it needs a high pressure fuel pump and the injectors and the rail replaced, which I have from another engine um, So all that needs replaced But actually we could probably take it off this one because it's probably not hurt at all and um, We could put that motor and transmission in this and I've already bought it and paid for it And I've peeled for enough parts off that truck to where I'm almost at zero or I am at zero on my cost um, so we could put that in pretty easy and then we could have a truck or we could you know, just clean it up and list it as it is and, you know, put it up for sale for like, you know, fourteen nine fifty or 15000 or something like that and let someone else put a motor in it. I found a used motor prices, uh, about 120,000 miles. This has 220 on it. At 120,000 miles, I found them for about 7500 for motor and transmission both and transfer case. Kind of hard to, hard to argue with that when you get a complete drive line right there minus your differentials, you know. For that kind of money if you drop down a thousand bucks you go to about a hundred forty thousand miles same thing motor transmission transfer case uh, it seems like a lot of people want to sell it that way because these transmissions really are pretty stout and they're not really sought after as far as failure points neither are the transfer case unless it's been abused so i don't know what we're going to do we'll have to see it's a pretty nice truck and I like it's rust free. She likes it's all leather. It's got heated and cool seats. She'll love that. She loves the booster seat as I call it and those power pedals. That's very nice for her. She'll be able to see out of it pretty good. If it was me, I'd do away with these standard 20 inch wheels. I'd put the adapters on and put dualies on it. I'd swap that rear end out for a dually rear end and I'd put an aluminum flatbed on it and that would be uh, more fitting to me. But We'll see what she wants to do. We'll go from there. But anyways, if we decide to fix it, we'll bring you back. If we if it sells, well, it sells. That's just fine, too. I was looking for a truck when I found this one, and I found all the others. So we can look for another one. Not a big deal. But I hope you guys enjoyed. And if, you have, if you're looking at 11 to 13, Power Stroke, 6.7, these are kind of things you have to consider. Catch you on the next one.